government will uh, listen to reason and uh, stop this project, sir. Thank you very much. Honorable member, Dr. Pratima Mandalji. Sir, I rise to participate in the... Just a minute. Honorable members, those who want to give written speech may hand it over at the table of the house. Yes, please, ma'am. Sir, I rise to participate in the discussion on the demands for grants under the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways for 2022-23. Sir, India is strategically located on the world shipping route with a coastline of approximately 7,517 kilometers. Maritime transport handles around 70% of India's trading in terms of value. It has 12 major and 200 non-major ports. As compared with other ports across the world, the numbers are not encouraging in India. Due to the lack of a deep sea port with 20 meters draft, mother vessels coming to India from anywhere in the world has to unload its cargo at transshipment ports like Colombo or Port of Singapore to load them into small ships and then sell it to Indian ports. This puts an extra burden of around rupees 16,000 per TU. Not just these, all the ports are saturated and this leads to poor functioning. Sir, there have been a sharp indication that the design of existing ports is inadequate to meet the current requirement for quick turnaround and handling of increased volumes. This causes delay in the feeding and evacuation of cargo and productivity of vessels. So there are around 14 institutions providing naval arti architecture degree to about 700 graduates per year in India. Whereas the current country needs about 10 times more naval architecture and shipbuilding engineer per year. It is also predicted that there will be an 8% increase in the demand every year with many of the students leaving India. The shortage of skilled architects will affect the industry. The intake capacity must be increased and women must be protected in the field. So instead of modernizing the ports, the government's 8 lakh crore Chagor Mala project is causing some irreversible damage, environmental effects on the coast with issues like coastal erosion as well as severe problems of degradation are being noticed. So governments are projecting or highlighting about the Sagarmala project, but the drawback should not be overlooked. Sir, around 352 ports have been identified to be implemented as major ports. A target of 3,200 million tons of ports capacity to handle 3,000 million tons of cargo was set to be reached by 2020. But in 2021, the total capacity stood at 2,562.85 MTPA. Not only this, the development of road network, electricity, and overall infrastructural development is also the need of the hour. The port productivity and efficiency also depend upon the quality and reliability of road and rail connectivity and adequate shortage and handling facilities. The lack of expressway connectivity between major ports as well as industrial clusters and high fuel cost make hinterland transportation inefficient and slow. Also, the container freight stations and business need to be organized efficiently through good management practice in space utilization. Said India has domestic industries which come can produce some of the raw materials required in shipbuildings. Especially, India has competitive steel manufacturing, light engineering, and IT industries, which can offer the required products at economical cost. Thus, this should be boosted. Rather, the minister must highlight the government steps in this regard. Sir, in the 2020-21 budget, the Honorable Finance Minister had announced that by 2024, the sheep recycling capacity of the country would be doubled. The minister had asked for a 60% raise in this year's budget in order to fulfill the aim. But the raise is negligible. Rather, the worrying thing is the fact that 48% of Alang's capacity remains unutilized. The main reason is non-compliance with environmental norms. Until and unless that is done, it will never get any ship entire from Europe. And at this rate, the target will never be reached. Sir, so, rupees 100 crore was allocated towards shipbuilding research. What has been the outcome of the project? And there has been no mention since. 
Also, the allocation of rupees 100 crore to Shagor Mala indicates that government is relying heavily upon the private sector for its implementation, which is unacceptable. So talking about the problem faced by the shipping industry, the ABG shipyard scam comes to the forefront. It is the same company to whom BJP government of Gujarat had allocated 1.21 lakh square meter of land at Dahej, Gujarat at 100% reduced rate. Despite the adverse report of CAG, the land was sold at 700 per square meter instead of rupees 1400. The company was caught in one of the highest camps, that is rupees 22,892 crore in 2016. But the FIR was lost very recently in February of 2020-22. So why the delay? What is the current status of this case? And how is the government planning to bring back the lost amount? I would like to request the Honourable Minister to address this issue in his reply. Along with this problem, the current problem faced by the traders revolves around the ongoing war, as there have been sanctions on the Russian ports which are important to the Indian market. Not only that, huge number of obtaining containers are stuck in Russia, leading to a dearth of the same. Freight's rate have gone high, perishable items of export like fruits such as grapes are getting destroyed. In such a scenario, the traders as well as farmers are severely affected. I would like to request the Honourable Minister to look into the matter and also enlighten the House on the steps taken by the government to combat the effects of war on the shipping and its dependent industries. Over here, I would also like to uh, ask the Honourable Minister whether 21 standard sailors near the Black Sea were rescued or no. This I say so because I didn't get any update regarding the same matter. So the shipping and port industry is plugged with regulatory and permission-related obstacles. Here I would like to take the opportunity to mention that government of West Bengal has created a single window channel for all the works related to the non-major ports. Even the Tajpur port, which will be completed within three years, due to the sincere effort of our Honorable Chief Minister Mamuta Bandopadhyay, will boost the economy of the state. Sir, similar steps should be taken for the major ports falling under the responsibility of the central government. The Waterways Authority of India yes. has found 25 out of 111 national waterways fit for cargo or passenger movement. National Waterways 44 on River Ichamoti is one of these. I would like to know from the Honorable Minister about the current status of the construction work of the said. According to the detailed project report, it should have been compelled within 24 months since the beginning of the construction. Moreover, there are ferries already running in the areas along Boshirhat and Itinda. So what will be the future of these ferries once waterways is constructed? And once the cargo transportation becomes operational, there is bound to be water pollution. How will that be taken care of? Sir, in 2020-21, share of major ports declined to 54%, while that of non-major ports increased to 46%. Yes. In the upcoming future, the major ports will be handling more cargo and the government in its 2021 bill is centralizing the power even more. Need of the hour is to decentralize and give the state governments their due share of power for a better future. Sir, with this, I am concluding my speech and with a thanks to the chair for allowing me to complete my speech and I hope that honorable minister will address my questions which I have raised here. Thank you, sir. Honorable Member Sri Rao.